On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, not just Sixers, we got to go around the league. The latest on Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver, what's next for him, and a quite a bit of other things of how it all impacts the entire NBA and the Philadelphia 76ers as well. We'll do that next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Gibbons from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co host and partner from the Enquirer.com, Sixers beat writer Keith Pompey. Keith, what's happening? What's popping, D? What's popping? Uh, not a lot, man. Getting closer and closer as we talk about things with Media Day. We get closer and closer, man, to the start of training camp and Media Day next Monday. So we're five days away from Media Day. How about that, man? It's always fun, too. Always good to be back in the building with everybody, get to see the new players, talk to them, catch up with the older players, see what's going on with their offseason, seeing how they may have adapted and changed their game, certain players that are around them now. It's always fun, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. I mean, but hey, you got a better part because see, I'm be sitting up in that room where ah, you see, there you go down there <laughs> mingling amongst the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll 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 worry about that next week. <laughs> okay. Thank everybody. <laughs> Thanks everybody for making Locked On Seventy Six as your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On Seventy Six is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On 76ers. It's interesting because we're going to have to figure out how we do that Monday's podcast. Should we do it after Media Day or before Media Day? We'll figure it all out as we get closer, uh, as we anticipate that. But listen, man, some news starting to come down, man, where we see a few things pop up uh, throughout the day where we heard about Robert Sarver last week being uh, reprimanded, if you will, for all of the things after the investigations done by the NBA. One-year ban from being around the both teams, the Phoenix Mercury and the Phoenix Suns. The second one, the $10 million fine. And Keith, as we talked about it last week, we said, man, that's nothing for him. That's absolutely nothing, especially when you look at what happened with Donald Sterling with the Los Angeles Clippers years back, him having to sell the team and all the backlash that came with that. This arguably is just as, was just as bad. And in any case, the thing that we discussed was he probably should lose the right to own a basketball team. Well, now we're hearing, uh, based on reports, who was it? Shams that put it out there, Keith? No, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know if everybody put it everybody out Everybody had it? All right, okay. Yeah. I only saw the one where it looks yeah. like that right now, man, there, there's conversation about him potentially uh, being in talks right now of actually going forward and selling the basketball team. The pressure got to him. I think one thing that helped, was the minority owner saying, "Hey, if if he's not, if he's if he's a part of this, I'm out." And the same thing with the sponsor that they have, their presenting sponsor on their jerseys, a PayPal said, "If he's out, if he's not out, PayPal is out as a presenting sponsor of the Phoenix Suns." Yeah, I think what really got it go, the ball moving too was when Draymond Green came out and said, "Hey, look, let's have the owners have a vote." to see if, if he should stay or not, if he should sell his team or not. Because right then and there, he put all the pressure on the owners. Because let's face it, if they vote and they vote to keep him, the next thing you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, now, got, right. <laughs> y'all said that y'all were woke, but y'all keeping this dude? Oh, 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 oh explain that to me. So you notice Draymond came out with that, and then next thing you know, Brother man talking about, I'm trying to sell the team. I want to sell it. So, I mean, honestly, I, I think that it got to a point where they had no choice, like, to say, look, dude, you're going to have to go, man. You're going to have to, like, say you're going to sell the team. Now, again, I don't know if it came, that, if that was the thing, but you don't want – the owners were in a no-win situation. Like, basically, you would have to vote this dude out because if not, people would look at – look at this league like it was suspect like it, it, it like it was fraudulent like saying 
this is what we, you're saying you want to do. You care about, you know, the, um, the the gay community. You care about the black community, the Latin community. You care about, you know, um, uh, victims of sexual harassment. But you keeping this dude? Nah. They had to make a move. Yeah, and also LeBron James coming out openly right away while only on social media. But LeBron James is a very powerful individual, as we know. Uh, his voice is heard, and you're probably right between Draymond Green and certainly LeBron James. Chris Paul uh, said something who is on that team, on that basketball team, former president, right, of the Players Association, and also dealt with everything with the Donald Sterling situation with the Los Angeles Clippers firsthand. That pressure from the players, top players, players with voices, players that have clout in the league, certainly, yeah, putting that pressure on the rest of the ownerships. Uh, groups out there to make sure that they do something. So the Board of Governors, if they did it, then look, kudos to them. And remember when it happened with the Los Angeles Clippers, Donald Sterling, a lot of them, we a lot of the talk was how many of them would actually vote against them because if he has some dirt, then what about the next one that might have dirt? And the one after him that uh, them might have dirt also. And they're all going to keep quiet because they don't want them now spilling the beans. This could get very interesting if, in fact, uh, he is out and we find out that the rest of the Board of Governors did have a big say in how this was to move forward. True. I agree. Yeah. So uh, that's a a good thing to see with the Phoenix Suns right now with that situation. And uh, we'll keep you up on that throughout the weeks, days, weeks and months as we go along here as things continue to develop with Robert Sarver and potentially selling the basketball team one thing that might help a lot of teams in the nba we only had to find out really about the philadelphia 76ers uh in the postseason where you could not go into canada without a vaccination well might be lifted keith we'll talk about that we'll also get into later on possible third leading score we're trying to project out for the philadelphia 76ers and who might that be i don't know keith's keith doesn't know who mine will be So we'll have that discussion later on when we come back right here, Locked On 76ers. Right now, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season. Find all the latest football league development, game matchup, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet Online, where the game starts. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. That's right. Playoff push for the baseball teams out there. You got NFL going on, NHL right behind there, and basketball, pro basketball creeping up. So make sure you guys get in there and do that today. We got to thank you all for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast for nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you do get your podcast. Keith? Um, you had some stuff, man. I only saw a brief, uh, a little bit of this, but, uh, you know, just a brief mention of it. But the talk was Canada maybe lifting the ban of people entering the country without being vaccinated, maybe lifting. And that helps out certainly with the Philadelphia 76ers. We know how important Matisse Thibel is for this basketball team. We looked at the Sixers schedule where they have that early back-to-back home situation in Canada to take on the Raptors early in the campaign. But now with this news, Sixers might be in the clear here, or at least Matisse Thibault might be in the clear where you have him a part of the team right away going to Canada. Yeah, the the Globe and Mail of Toronto reported yesterday that the the Canadian federal government is planning to drop the COVID-19 vaccination requirement by September the 30th. So what that does is it it helps the Sixers out tremendously because they'll be able to have their full roster. And for a guy like Matisse, who's been working hard, doing what he had to do this offseason, you know, that was going to be the only thing. Like, 
okay. He they, he worked on his shot. He's in the tip top shape of his of his career. He's doing a lot of other things, but he can't play in Toronto. And these are like two important games. So with this is it kind of alleviates a lot of things. And it also helps the 76ers like move forward, you know, planning with a, a rotation. Because let's face it, and I know it's early, it's not the playoffs, but you know, let's say if you know M- M- Matisse is the sixth man or seventh man, but then all of a sudden these are two key games and you can't play with them. I mean, this is early on. Like you want to have your guys to see what he can do. And then you gotta re you gotta bring them back and incorporate them. And then you got guys on the team looking like Come on, man. Like, you know, and then you got you got people in the in the the fans, you know, the focus wouldn't be on how great of a player he is or how much he improved in the work he did on the offseason. It's basically he's unvaccinated still. You know what I mean? So so I, I think that has a lot to do with it. So for the Sixers, you know, that's a plus. It's also let's think about it. You know, teams like the Brooklyn Nets helps them out a lot. The Boston Celtics helps them out a lot. But, you know, for the Sixers, you know, the team we cover, you know, you got to look at it as a win-win for them. It's going to help them, you know, especially in what's going to be a grueling two-game stretch. Yeah, and we all can flash back to the postseason where he wasn't available and while they did prevail in that series, it may have been a little more difficult than it needed to be, not taking anything away from the Raptors, but just not having Matisse Thibel on the floor certainly didn't help things man so yeah this is to be a a big deal for him and also a bit of a a weight off his shoulders where he doesn't have to really explain himself anymore sure it will come up because they will be playing in toronto however he doesn't have to explain anymore because he's going to be there and he's going to be able to play he'll stick to his guns this is what he believes he didn't have to do it and and do what he needs to do but he's also eligible for a contract extension Keith, so based on what his play is, his level of play, and, you know, just in minutes in particular and games, you never know how you might play against the, the Toronto Raptors and whether he stays with Philadelphia or leaves and goes elsewhere. Uh, the fact that this would be a bit of a weight off his shoulders again, clear his mind when it comes to this conversation and, and just go out there and play basketball. If all the things are true, as you uh, talk about with his workouts, uh, where he seems to be right now with his, his, his shooting. We saw videos, of course, of him with uh, trying to uh, correct some things with his ball handling. If all those things come to fruition and Matisse I will add a, a, a certain element of his game to offensively to what we already know him to be as, as a defensive player, then, then sky's the limit for him uh, overall as, as a complete player, maybe even a two-way player uh, in this league going forward and it's a big deal it's a big deal now that toronto has decided to lift the lift the ban and and allow these players and anybody in general general population also just regular regular people just wanting to travel to the to the country to go and check out things in toronto so big news big news early on before we get things started in the nba season and most importantly for us as we talk about it here on this podcast locked on 76ers Really important for Matisse Thibel and his basketball team also. So uh, good news, good news for, for them. And uh, as we kind of pivot from the more national thing with both Sarver and Canada's new rule with the vaccination, let me talk about who might be the third scorer for the Philadelphia 76ers. I like this little fun exercise as we discuss it and kind of, again, look ahead, look forward to see what this team might be. I don't know what Keith's is. Keith doesn't know who mine is. You're going to go first. I'll tell you that much. And then we'll get the, the listeners and the viewers and, and see what they have maybe in some comments and on Twitter also. We'll do that final segment right here, Locked On 76ers. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. Keith Pompey, Yvonne Givens with you here as we get closer to the start of the Sixers season, beginning with training camp and media day, the day before training camp gets underway. Keith, good question by you. Who will be the third leading scorer if we are to believe that Joel Embiid will be first? Who will be the third leading scorer on this basketball team? Man, that's a good question because, and and here's the thing, because, you know, there's no telling that if James Harden is a facilitator, that he'll be the second leading scorer. 
Yeah. Right? There's no telling, yeah. right? That's perhaps. But I'm assuming that James Harden is the second leading scorer. It's assuming. To me, the third leading scorer is going to be Tyrese Maxey. You know, I mean, you know, we look at it and, you know, Tobias Harris has held that, you know, um, title, so to speak, or he has been that since he's been here. Um, Even when they had Jimmy Butler, J.J. Redick, Tobias was the third guy, right, since he yep. came in. But I just feel like, you know, Tyrese is a guard. You know, Doc wants him to get out and, and, and get buckets. Young dude. Tobias is is basically sharing a forward spot, rotating back. His role is going to change a little bit because they got the P.J. Tucker thing, so to speak, happening. I just look at Matisse. I mean, excuse me. I look at Tyrese Maxey as the 76ers third leading scorer if he's not the second leading scorer on his team because I feel like James is going to be – you know, he's going to get buckets, but I feel like he's going to be more of a facilitator too. I I, I – I like it. I think that's an obvious choice. I mean, look, you can have an argument for Tobias Harris also, as you mentioned, holding that title for the last couple of seasons. Let me throw a little wrinkle in here, man. I think Tyrese Maxey will be the second leading scorer on this basketball team, and James Harden will be the third leading scorer for the Philadelphia Because, look, I, I think that James Harden will still give you that 20, 18 to 20 a night. And he might decide that, hey, I'm just going to keep passing the ball around, snapping the ball all over the place, picking up these assists. And he feels more comfortable with everything where he's seeing the maturation as far as the scorer goes from Tyrese Maxey, the way he picks up the game, the way he impacts it with his his speed and the way he attacks the rim, attacks the basket, and is an improved outside shooter. So with the early, early start to the season – Maxi already believing that he's improved with his outside shot. And it may not fall at the same clip that it did a season ago. I don't think he's going to shoot 42% again. It might be around 38, 39 because he'll get more opportunities, get more shots up, but will also open up drives to the basket and getting to the free throw line. I think Maxi might finish somewhere around 22. And with that, I think James Harden will be right there behind him as the third leading scorer on this basketball team. I, I really do. And I don't think he will care about it. While I do think he might want to make the all-star team, I don't think he cares about being the second leading scorer. It's more about still getting your points, but also getting those assists in there, team picking up the W's. He'll naturally maybe find his way into the all-star game. But I think James Harden, Keith, to this question, I think James Harden will be the third leading scorer on this basketball team. Three, four, loop there. Yeah, I hope, yeah, yeah. I mean, because, I, I, you know, you hear me. I like, I said assuming. Assuming, yeah. right. Yeah, but I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, I really do. And look, I'll make a little case for Tobias Harris, too, because once he settled in, in March, he was in a really good rhythm, a really good rhythm of what he could do, finding his way, shooting more threes, the way that the other ways that he would score with the ball in his hands, back to the basket. He's going to see a lot less touches that are more drawn up for him. So Doc Rivers coaching staff is going to have to be more creative and the same thing with James Harden where he's openly talked about being the point guard and it's his job to get everybody some good shots good looks and to make sure that they have the confidence that they can do so but with that being said um I think it's gonna be a little tough but Tobias Harris as we know can score in this league I wouldn't be surprised if he was the third leading scorer and if it's James Harden second but Tobias, Tobias Harris third Tyrese Maxey fourth that's a good problem for them to have if we're sitting here having a conversation like that. I agree. I agree. Yep. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, again, we are five days away, and every day that passes, of course, we get closer and closer. We're four days away to the start of training camp for the Philadelphia 76ers. Media day for us on on the, uh, what's that, the 26th? 26th? Monday. Yeah. yeah so the 26th. We will be there for, for media day. It's going to be a fun time uh, as we get started. But, Keith, before we do all that, you got to let the people know, man, where they can find us and check in with us and answer the question that we just asked about who will be the third leading scorer. Exactly. But first of all, I want to say thank, thanks to everyone for making Locked On 76 as your first listen. Now go and make um, NBA Top 50 on Locked On NBA your second listen. Listen. Which NBA player moves the betting eyes the most this season? 
Locked On and Bet Online Odds Maker present the NBA Top 50 Most Valuable Players. Find it on the Locked On NBA wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And the same thing with us. Wherever you get your podcast, you can get this Locked On 76ers podcast and you can get us on YouTube. But you can also follow my man D, especially tonight. So when you get done with this podcast, go to 97.5 FM and listen to the Divine Giving Show, right? So from 6 to 10. Now, you can also follow D on, on Twitter at DivineG975. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. And starting next week, you can go back to reading my stuff in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Inquirer.com. Back from vacation, and Keith will be uh, gearing up for another NBA season. What year is this for you? My 10th. 10th? Yeah, it's been a while, man. Dang, 10 yeah, years. Yeah. About that. yeah, 15 yeah. for me. Fifth, well, see, I, I, I'm the young boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but as you say that, man, as you said, thanking everybody. We got to thank everybody for sticking with us throughout the summer. It's the summer. So, you know, but our, 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 you know, the interest has still been there. It's been pretty good. We've been getting a pretty good amount of feedback of how people enjoy the podcast. We want to make sure we thank everybody before we get ready to start the season off from day one together where Keith brought me in in midseason. And I really appreciate Keith and the people from Locked On and bringing me on. But I'm excited to really get started uh, from day one with Keith as we begin to cover again the 10th for Keith, 15th for me being around the team. Uh, where we get to do this together from day one and, and carry throughout hopefully a, a long, long season for the squad. So thank you all. We really appreciate it for sure. You sticking with us throughout the summer as we get ready for the start of, of, of this, this campaign. Yep. All right. Deuces, y'all. Peace. Appreciate it.